So let's move on to Rogue One, a Star Wars story, whose name I just said right. <laughs> what did you think of the, uh, since I, I spent the last 10 minutes kind of uh, blabbering about specs and numbers that only a few people will care about, what, what, did, what did you think of uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story? Um, I thought it was really good. Um, I thought it kind of fit in really well with the original trilogy. Um, unfortunately, it did make the prequel trilogy look really, really bad and super stiff and just in fairness, not though, good. In fairness, though, most things do look those trilogies. Make, make them look bad. Yeah, well, I they kind of look bad on their own. Yeah. But this, this just, it fit in so well with the last movie and also with the original trilogy. It just had that um, texture to it. Like the practical effects, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there was a lot of CG, but like it was done really well. Uh, K K2 SO was a full CG character that looked great. Oh, and, yeah, he uh, was perfect. Was one of the high points of the um, the movie. I, yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think it was a really, really strong movie. I don't think it's fair to necessarily compare it to episode eight because I think that they're wildly different movies, and I think that's but intentional. But that's not like what I'm saying though is like they you can tell that it's from the same universe correct sure you sure know, absolutely the the tone the mood um mm -hmm. you know it, it fits in really well but at so. the same time it does give you a much more bleak look it, it where I think that the older movies even tended to kind of gloss over the 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 desperation that, that was kind of in the air at this point. How how much of a ragtag group this was and how desperate that they were. And you really, like these scenes here in these little, in these smaller cities, you really get a sense of, of character of this galaxy much more. Mm -hmm. To me, this movie is character building for an entire galaxy. Yeah, it's less of a spectacle and now it's more believable. You're seeing, you know, families, um, people just doing like normal things, like Galen himself, um, this wouldn't be a spoiler, but he's like a farmer, right? He's like farming. It's in the trailers. You could see yeah, him. Yeah, he was like a trailer. farmer. Yeah. And like that's that's like cool, you know? Like it's yeah. just showing people being people or aliens being aliens. I guess they were they're people in Star Wars. Yeah. Otherwise that'd be yeah. kinda like not racist, but like species. Prejudice, spa species spa speciest. Species. So, so. Let's move, um, just fair warning, we're going to move into spoilers now. So if you haven't seen the movie, go ahead and back on out if you've seen the movie. Um, you know, we're going to get into some stuff. So, this movie's bleak. It's dark. It's very dark. It, it to me, it, it's, you know, it's, it's like, how, it's a war movie. Mm -hmm. Much more so than I think the other ones were. Um, we're going into some <laughs> sort of other video. I was kind of wondering if it would play the next, the next trailer, but it, it did not. Yeah. So we'll just back um, to that. It definitely did have the feel, like, especially there There was this planet that they were on. And I know that they said the name, but, like, I feel like I, I had a hard time keeping remember. up a little bit. That was, like, kind of one of the negatives. Is it that moved I around so quickly. Yeah. Um, the planet that they were stealing the plans from was kind of like a tropical planet. It was mm. actually really, really pretty. But seeing them have their battle scene on it reminded me a lot of, like, you know, the Vietnam and color thing on right Netflix sure that we had watched you yeah. know and the, they, they mentioned that they actually were inspired by some of some of that footage from the vietnam war and it, it definitely mm -hmm. has that feeling of desperation of a, a group basically you know it's that stereotypical group of a you know a few faceless combatants giving their life for the cause and mm -hmm. that was really different to see in this universe because e as dark as things have gotten in star wars to me this was a peak of of desperation and darkness in the sense mm -hmm. that they gave their lives to get these plans back and i mean that's how it ends they all yeah. die I mean, not that's... like they gave their lives and they made it out and were like injured or some of them made it out like yeah i kind of wondered if the main two characters were gonna make it out because they did that thing that's actually super cliche and i'm kind of sick of seeing it in was like it? tv and movies where you've got your group of heroes and you know, each step of the way, someone falls behind, someone dies, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but then the main two make it out. I hate that. 
I think that's like it's been done super unrealistic like what would be more realistic than that is that they all die in like one explosion like to me that's more like they're all dying at the same time that's more realistic right but I get what they're doing they're showing each person come to terms with you know their own personal things going on like uh what's his name Malbus not believing in the force until they're at the so, very end and then the very al almost, end. you know, through the death of the blind uh, samurai guy, something like that. Through his death sort mm -hmm. of carrying on that spirit, mm -hmm. you know, with him and then and tr basically feeling emboldened, I guess, from mm -hmm. it. Or, you know, that was a really powerful scene between those two, which I thought had a very interesting K2SO, interesting so, um... You know, making the in fact, I think like the one of the last things that he said was that uh, Jen's behavior is continuously unpredictable right. or something like that. Basically, he's he's a statistics dude mm -hmm. and he keeps, you know, saying, oh, there's a really high probability of her turning her back on you right. and shooting you or whatever. Well, she gives him a gun, which is something he was wanting the whole time, you know, basically mm -hmm. wanting to be trusted because he's more than just a robot, you know, well, or, and, or a droid. He was like. He was he had personality. Yeah. And like I mentioned earlier how this, you know, this really gave us the perspective of how fragmented and 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 uh, fractured the the rebels were and how this event galvanized them and it gave them a mm -hmm. hope. And that kind of, you know, that was really important and it really showed how bad off they were before this victory and how much of a sacrifice it took to get it. It, and it, and it, it sort of parallels with how seemingly unstoppable the Empire looked, mm -hmm. you know, with the, they had they, owned, they had a whole planet just to keep the records on, mm -hmm. for God's sake. I mean, come on. The, you know, they're, they had a shield on the entire planet. Yeah, I mean, they looked, un, they lo looked utterly unstoppable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they did a lot right in this movie. Um, there were a few things that I didn't, so there's some editing choices that I thought were a little odd. The, the close-ups on Tarkin's CG character really kind of underscored the Uncanny Valley problem where it was immediately clear this was not a real man. Mm -hmm. The closer they got, the more I was like, why don't you just back up a little bit? It looks, it's, it, I mean, it looks good, don't get me wrong, but like, but don't like tell. get up on top of it and be like, look! Um, showing Leia there at the end was yeah. cool, but they didn't... Unnecessary. To me, they could have just shown the back of her head. I mm -hmm. know people, there have been people that would have wanted more, but I think that you know who that is. You don't need to shove it down mm -hmm. her throat. It's of like, ooh, and now Leia's here. And I think that if there's if there's one complaint I have, it's that that they you know they feel the need to at all times. Mm -hmm. There there were a few good callbacks. Leia was pushing it for me. C three PO and R two were a little bit superfluous to me. But you know, other than that, the only real other editing problems that I would point to is, to me, the whole conversation between Krennic and Vader, to me, seemed pointless. Yeah. Um, to me, if Vader never said a word, if all you saw him was in that vat, and then at the end of the movie where he's on the ship, cutting dudes down, that would have been, to me, yeah, much more powerful. Yeah, we didn't need to see him choke another dude. He just loves choking people. Yeah, he, he seems God, really he loves choking into people. that. Um, I disagree about C-3PO and R2-D2. I'm not going to get totally into it, but I just really feel like they were an essential part of the whole thing. Um, though it does make me wonder why they were there and not with... Who were they supposed to be with? Well, they were there so we could see them, of course. No, but I mean, like, there's like... There literally is like like a history like, timeline for them because they've been all over the place. Right, you know, they're so entwined in every single war that's ever happened. <laughs> um, but well, you know, the force goes with them too. Just because your droid doesn't mean the force doesn't sure, love you. Sure, of um, course. I, that's what I want to see. I want to see a droid that's like a Jedi, and he's like, wasn't there the force be with us? Who was that guy in the? Um, he had a bunch of lightsabers in the prequel movies. That was, oh my god, he's my favorite. General, was he a general? Yeah, it was General Grievous. Grievous. Was he a robot? He was a robot. And he wielded he was, a lightsaber. He was, he was kind of both. Like, okay. he had a heart and, and stuff. Um, oh, you're right, he did, didn't he? He is a badass. Actually, he yeah, is Grievous like, is one, cool. he's like my favorite He's probably character. the one, the one good, good thing, him and Maul. Maybe yeah. the only two good things from the, those the bad guys really do tend to be some of my favorites. I like the Jedi, and I feel like I would probably be on their side. Um, I'm too stiff. 
But they are, yeah, it's too stiff, it's too, everything's gonna be okay, and I'm just gonna let myself die. Mm -hmm. it, it's fine. I would not be like that. Um, but anyways, that's a different tangent. Um, I think that the, 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 its greatest accomplishment, this movie's greatest accomplishment, I should say, is, is that it adds so much context to the older movies, mm -hmm. and it really fills in so many gaps in such a good way. There are some plot holes in it, but nothing that wasn't in the old movies, too. Mm -hmm. um, nothing. I mean, Galen spending three minutes to talk about <laughs> how much he loves his daughter instead of just telling them what they needed to know. Leia did it, too. I mean, to, to a certain degree. Um, you know, and, and of course, there are excuses that can be made for that. But, you know, these are the, the small suspensions of disbelief that are necessary mm -hmm. in any movie of this sort. So, just, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and be quick about this. I don't want to get too much into it. But, um... Some of the negatives that I thought were just that the, I felt like the the plot was too uh, kind of crammed together. They, you they, know, they, they didn't take enough lot. time. Um, we didn't really know what happened to Jen. While she, is her name Jen? Am I just saying Jen some Arso. random Jen or so? Okay, Jen Arso. all right, thank you. That's what I thought I was hearing. Um, and Galen or so. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't know much about what her life was like. We just through one conversation we find out how she got into being a slave i guess or you a know prisoner prisoner or something like that um i thought we were gonna see more of that uh one thing i really liked about her though but i also didn't like it's kind of like a double-edged sword is that i like that through most of the first half of the movie she did not say anything she was really quiet. For a minute, like, I thought she was going to be, like, a mute character, and I was going to be like, whoa, how is this going to work, you know? Yeah, um, she didn't speak for a long time. Yeah, but then she just kind of, and this goes into the negative, like, just flips like that. And then all of a sudden, she gives a shit She's about what's guarded. happening. Well, and that, that interaction with why. her father is what pulled her back I in. know why, but it's kind of like, they could have given us a hint for a second that, it was going they, to happen. They had so many characters to try and get involved that they that they jumped around a lot early, but it was in order to get to the main plot, which mm -hmm. which was the basically the, the whole movie was the entire was was the main plot. There yeah. wasn't a lot of side stuff, which I think was it's fine. Uh, the mm -hmm. movie would have been three hours long otherwise. Yeah. Um. Another thing too is that I'm guessing that the whole everything that happened happened in a relatively short amount of time mm -hmm. you know yeah. they had the they had their Just little days. they they got her you know they were like okay we want you to go get the plans or whatever destroy the go talk to Saul Guerrero about, oh yeah that's right because yeah. they wanted to draw out her dad or something um I don't know it was really glossed over I just kind of felt like it just sped through it but um so I guess immediately after they got the plans and transmit it and everything they give it to Leia and mm -hmm. then she gives it I don't know, maybe there's another battle, like, immediately, and then she gives them to R2-D2, and then we're into the plot of the fourth, or the episode four. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I think, in general, the movie was, was really solid. I think it did a lot of good things. It really, I, I liked the way that it, it played up this faceless forgotten to history sacrifice basically mm -hmm. that we don't we they never you know these these names don't get mentioned in the other movies obviously yeah. we know why it's because this movie wasn't made yet but it's kind of the way that they they took that accidental fiction mm -hmm. and play well of course they didn't mention these people they're all dead you know i mean they they, they made it work and they, they mm -hmm. made you know why was the death star so easy to blow up was that seem like a weird plot hole well no because galen did this see that they, they filled in all these holes you know, in a really, really intelligent way, which I think is is easier said than done. So, mm -hmm. yeah, to make it as heavy as it was and as believable, well, as it can be, but it still um, fit the fiction. You know? Yeah, it definitely did, and I'm excited to see more of what they're gonna do too, because they treated this one like they didn't treat it like a prequel. They treat it a they, it's a Star Wars story. Yeah, no, no main theme. No, Even though no it crawl was in the beginning. part of the main plot, I want to see more of what they're gonna do because I mean, I felt like yeah, they probably did not have as big as a budget, but it didn't feel like they really cut back on anything. Right. They had a really great cast. They had really great graphics and you know CG <clears throat> and special effects. I keep doing that. Um, so yeah. I can't wait to see what's next. I love this. I love that we're able to get this, you know, expansion of the Star Wars universe. And that it's good. 
Yeah, and that is good, and it's not crap, and it's just really, really sad that we have, gosh, that we have that one prequel trilogy just, just sticking looming, out like a sore thumb. Over our heads, because it, this movie made the old movies it look better, it made the it. old movies look worse. They yeah. just look so bad. They look so out of place and awful at this Makes point. Makes me want to go watch um, episode eight again. Yeah, oh, great movie. Um, so yeah, that's about all we got for you this time. Um, as usual, if you like the video, please give us the like button, uh, share, subscribe. Please do tell your friends if you enjoy the video. Um, help us build this up. We would be very, very appreciative of that. If you dislike the video, as always, click thumbs down. Give us some constructive constructive criticism in the comments. Please don't be mean. It, it really bothers us. Uh, <laughs> don't do that to us. Don't be that guy. Um, if you have any thoughts you want to share about Rogue One, what you thought about the plot, uh, no spoilers because we want to keep that the comment section somewhat sacred for people that haven't seen the movie. But um, give us your thoughts if you thought, you know, however you feel about the switch, the new info about that. You know, does does the, does the lower clock rate make you a little more reserved about the switch? Are you still excited? Let us know what you think about that as well. Uh, so, yeah, until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>